The following program is being specially recorded to be sent to American servicemen in German prison camps and will be distributed by the War Prisoners Aid of the YMCA. Bristol Myers, the makers of Ipana toothpaste for the smile of beauty and Minute Rub, modern chest rub, take you now to Duffy's Tavern. Hello, Duffy's Tavern. Where do you lead me, D? To Archie, the manager speaking. Duffy ain't here. Oh, hello, Duffy. Tonight, Sonny Tuck. You remember the guy, Duffy. The one that when you once said to your wife, tell me, what has he got that I ain't got? She talked for two days. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, big tall guy, Duffy. You know, broad shoulders, big chest, slim waist, big blue eyes, wavy blonde hair. Boy, if he was only a dame. <laughs> yep. <clears throat> Well, well, I'll call you back, Duffy. The band just started to play that new Western song I wrote, Leave Me Hard Ride Tonight on a Prairie. And I want to listen to it. I guess it's just modesty, Duffy, but I really love that song. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to Duffy's Tavern. Come in and meet Finnegan, Eddie the waiter, Miss Duffy, our singer Bob Graham, Reed Beat Reeves and his orchestra, our special guest tonight, Sonny Tufts, and Archie himself, Ed Gardner, brought to you by two products it will pay you to remember. Ipana toothpaste for the smile of beauty, Minute Rub, modern chest rub. Ipana, Minute Rub. Sets all day where the bloom is a paper on the stage brush and the deer and the cantaloupe play. <laughs> I'm a saying, who threw that? <laughs> who threw that? A music lover, no doubt. <laughs> Tell them crumbs if they don't like my song, they can lump it. The back of my throat to them. <laughs> I'm a saying bonus notches to the city. It's no place for a lonesome cow's hand. <laughs> Leave me right. <laughs> Wait a minute. Now listen, you guys, be careful how you throw them dishes around. Remember, China is our ally. <laughs> Well, Eddie, I, I guess all great composers have to suffer like this. That's right, Mr. Archer. And these people are just trying to help you. <laughs> well, I guess it's our lot in life, Eddie. Look at Tichikowski. <laughs> all they paid him was eighteen twelve for a whole overture. <laughs> and look at Schubert and his symphony. They wouldn't even let him finish it. <laughs> So I say, leave him mock me. After this song of mine gets published, the world will be singing a different tune. Mm. Now, that I believe. <laughs> yeah. Anyway, who, who's going to publish that song? My publishers, the Million Dollar Publishing Company. Who's that? They're the people that discovered me. How did they discover you? I answered their ad in a magazine. <laughs> here, look at it. Now. Let's see now. It says here, attention songwriters. Have you got a lot of talent and a little money? We will bring it out of you. <laughs> if your song is a hit, we'll know it. Remember Jada, Always, Swanee, Margie, all big hits and we knew it. <laughs> so don't delay. Send your song to the Million Dollar Publishing Company and make a million tomorrow. Please enclose 15 cents to cover costs. <laughs> yeah, so sounds like a very reliable firm, doesn't it? Yes, it does. You sent them your song, of course. Oh, well, naturally. I wouldn't want to pass up an offer like that. What do you think I am, a sucker? <laughs> there will be a three-minute pause while I wrestle with temptation. <laughs> well, good luck, sir. Uh, thanks, Eddie. Boy, I hope I hear from them soon. Leave me home right tonight on 
a feeling Too hot <laughs> Oh Hiya, Flanagan. Today I got new song of yours. Great song. Thanks. Keeps running through my head. Well, what's going to stop it? <laughs> Nothing. Boy, what a beautiful song. To leave my heart right tonight on the prairie. So the words got so much meaning. Thanks, Flanagan. So yours. Yeah. What's your prairie? <laughs> Larry, it's a uh, thing out west, uh, sort of a flat hill. <laughs> oh, that's uh, uh, You know, Arch, every day you learn me something new. I always tell everybody that uh, you make me what I am today. Honey, <laughs> if you don't mind, I would rather not be connected with it. <laughs> Well, take the credit, Arch. You'll deserve it. Ah, good evening, Archie. Well, Officer Clancy, glad to see you. Come in and take a load off your beat. <laughs> uh, hello, Clancy. Well, it's Clifton Finnegan. Been behaving yourself, Clifton? Oh, yeah, Clancy. Are you sure? Look, if it's about writing Clancy's a stinker on that fence, I got an alibi. <laughs> What's your alibi? Uh, I can't write. <laughs> <laughs> ah, Finnegan, I get a kick out of you. Bless your little brain. <laughs> you know, I was with your father the night you came into this world. You what? Yes, sir. And five years later, he called me up and he said, Clancy, it's a boy. <laughs> a shot in the dark, if I ever heard one. <laughs> Say, uh, by the way, uh... What do you have, Clancy? Oh, the usual chartreuse flip. Uh -huh. Incidentally, Archie, they tell me you've written a song. A song? Yeah, that's right, Clancy. An Irish song, I hope. Well, uh... uh what do you call it? Uh, leave me heart right tonight on the prairie. Oh, it's a beautiful title. Leave me heart right tonight on Tipperary. <laughs> uh, no, Clancy, uh... Prairie. Wait a minute. Not a Western song. Yeah. Shades of Chauncey Alcott. Don't you know that the only good songs is Irish songs? Now, just a second. Don't Clancy. take my word for it. Ask any Irishman. Nancy, <laughs> I ain't saying there's nothing wrong with Irish songs. Mine just happens to be a Western. Well, then the least you can do is to give it a little Irish flavor. All right. I'll call it Take Me Back to My Boots and My Kushla. <laughs> I'll write another one called The Flight Boy of the Irish World. That'll make you happy. Archie. Yeah? Archie, I've been listening, and I have to agree with Officer Clancy here. Irish songs are very beautiful. Oh, uh, ain't they, though, Mr. Bailey? Do you know Killarney? Sure, and Mother McCree. Oh, uh, Mother McCree. Yeah. That is a beautiful song. That song has a message for everyone. And so has Bailey. <laughs> <laughs> Quiet, Archie. You have no soul. Come on, Mr. Bailey, let's sing Mother McCree. Sure, I love the dear silver that shines in your uh, hair. Officer, Officer Clancy. Huh? Officer Clancy, if you don't mind, I'd rather just talk about Mother. <laughs> you see, Mother is the one person we can always depend on. Well, Aaron, go Bristol Myers. <laughs> and mothers deserve even more credit than they get. For on them rests the responsibility for the happiness and well-being of every member of the family. Then, to Next to the family physician, mother is the most important person in guarding her family's health. So, naturally, it's to every mother's interest to know about the best things for the health of her family. For instance, how to take intelligent care of the teeth and gums of her children. A good way to do that, mothers, is to see that every member of your family visits the dentist faithfully. And between visits, uses Ipana toothpaste and gum massage regularly. For Ipana is not only unsurpassed in cleaning and brightening teeth, but when used with massage, is especially designed to help keep gums firm and healthy. That's why so many dentists recommend this daily routine. Brush your teeth regularly with Ipana toothpaste. And every time you do, put a little extra Ipana on your brush or fingertip and massage it on your gums. And that's a good idea for every member of the family to follow. So help yourself, help your family to healthier teeth, Firmer gums, more sparkling smiles. Use Ipana toothpaste and gum massage. Hello, Archie. Tell me, is he here yet? 
Who, Miss Duffy? Who? Sonny Tuck. For who else would I spend a whole day in the beauty shop? A whole day in the beauty shop? What's the matter? Were they out of it? <laughs> Very funny. Now, please, I got no patience to stand here being stupid. Where's Sonny Tuck? What do you want with Sonny Tuck? I'm going to ask him to the dance. What dance? The Ten Jolly Girls AC St. Valentine's Day track meet and dance. <laughs> track me? Well, uh, you know some of the girls when they see a man. Uh, yes, I do. <laughs> so uh, we thought it would look more dignified if we called it a track meet. I see. But Sonny Tufts, uh, look, why don't you ask your boyfriend, uh, Breckenbridge Hartsenfelder, to take you to the dance? Oh, uh, him and me had a fight, so I'm not going with him. Oh, what was the fight about? He wouldn't take me to the dance. <laughs> but who cares? Oh, if I could walk into that dance with Sonny Tuck, would those girls drop dead? <laughs> Sonny Tuck, take you to the dance, Miss Duffy. You're flying around the helium copper. <laughs> he wouldn't take you. Oh, no? Just because he's a movie star? Listen, Archie, many a big movie star goes out with civilian girls. <laughs> Sensation we created the dance. Oh, I can see it now. Mr. Sonny Tuff, this is Miss Patrinky Yarbut. <laughs> Mr. Tuff, this is Cheryl Rotino. Sonny Tuff, need Henrietta Nickeldocker. <laughs> I noticed poor Tuff is so shocked he ain't saying a word. <laughs> Henrietta Mickeldocker. Say, Mr. Archie, special delivery letter for you. Oh, boy, let's see, Eddie. Yep. From that publishing firm, let's see. Dear friend and honored artist, we have received your great song and believe it will join the ranks of the immortals. That means it won't die. Eight to five. <laughs> Quiet, Eddie. <clears throat> uh, can't wait till we publish this great song of the West. Naturally, it should have an attractive, appropriate cover. <clears throat> so please send $25, which covers cost of printing, plus hiring of cowboy, horse, and sunset. <laughs> please rush money. <clears throat> Yours in haste, Million Dollar Publishing Company. <clears throat> Where am I going to get 25 bucks? You ain't actually going to send it. I got it, Eddie. The letter says rush. Yeah, but this is a phony. Now, wait a minute, Eddie. I can recognize phonies. You're talking to a man who has been gypped plenty. <laughs> now, let's see. Where can I get that 25? Don't look at me. Hmm. Say, uh, there's the cash register. <laughs> there's money in there. <laughs> do tell. <laughs> now, look, you ain't going to do nothing jail is. Look, Eddie, what would be wrong if I just took a loan of the dough? That would be like Jesse James taking the loan of a train. <laughs> but who's going to know about it? Fifteen, twenty, twenty-five. Oh, if I had the wings of an angel. <laughs> now, listen, Eddie, this ain't stealing. This is just redistribution. <laughs> Now, take this dough, go down to the post office, and send a money order to the address on this letter. Okay, Miss Arthur. And make it pronto. Adios. San Quentin. <laughs> now, go on, get going. Oh, boy, it won't be long now. I should say you won't, Mr. Dirty Crook Archie. Miss Duffy, was you standing there all the time? I certainly was. And you know what'll happen if I tell Papa... He'll put you in jail. Miss Duffy, please don't tell your father. Just give me a little time. Well, uh, Archie, I might forget if, uh... If what? If a certain party could persuade a certain party to take a certain party to a certain party. <laughs> you mean if I don't get Sonny Tuck? Miss Duffy, that's blackball. <laughs> you can't do this. Take your choice, Archie. Mm. Say, Archie. Oh, hello, Bob. What seems to be wrong here? Well, uh, nothing that a few years... Please, Miss Duffy, leave us not discuss my delinquency in front of a juvenile. <laughs> leave us talk it over in private. Uh, Bob, sing something, will you? 
Boy, you sure seem worried. Oh, no, it's nothing. Just a little trouble with my song. Seems there's a few bars connected with it that I forgot about. <laughs> uh, go ahead and sing. Now, come here, Miss Duffy. Let's talk this over. Sometimes I wonder why I spend the lonely night dreaming of a song. The melody haunts my reverie, and I am once again with you. When our love was new, and each kiss an inspiration. Oh, but that was long ago. Now my consolation is in the stardust of a song. Beside the garden wall, when stars are bright, you are in my arms. The nightingale tells his fairy tale of paradise where roses grow. Oh, I dream in vain In my heart It will remain My stardust melody The memory of love's Stuffy, be reasonable. I can't make Sonny Tuff take you to the dance. Archie, all I know is that if you don't, I'll have Papa put you in jail for 20 years, and when you get out, he'll fire you. <laughs> well, look, the guy's a society guy in a movie, son. Oh, sh- Archie, here he comes. Uh, oh, uh, Sonny Tuff. <laughs> Welcome to Duffy's, Sonny. Thanks. Say, I always kind of thought that Duffy's was just a little hole in the wall. Yeah, kind of surprised you, huh? Yeah, it's a big hole in the wall. <laughs> Say, uh, who are you? Me? Uh, oh, permit me. Uh, I am uh, Archie, mine host. Uh, <laughs> I manage the place, take care of the customers. Oh, uh, uh, sort of a major domo. Uh, well, naturally, we don't serve minors. <laughs> Say, what a big guy you are. <laughs> How's the air up there? (laughs) (laughs) See, that's that's very clever. I think I'm up all the time. But uh, I'm really serious. That's uh, quite a tall height you got. Uh, Come here, let's put our heads back to back. Let's see. See, you're, you're about three inches taller than I am. Well, that's just because you're three inches shorter. (laughs) Say, you're clever, too. (laughs) No, we're alike in a lot of ways, Sonny. Oh, well, nobody's perfect. (laughs) No, I mean it, really. We're like two peas on a knife. You... (laughs) You got a strapping physique? I got a strapping physique. Uh, what would you do if the strap broke? Now, Sonny, please, don't judge me physique by the way that I'm built. (laughs) I'm deceitful. How much do you weigh? 110 pounds. (laughs) And not an ounce of it fat. Hmm. Hmm. All bone, eh? Yeah. Uh, Just take a look at his chest. Where? Oh, there, behind the belt buckle. <laughs> Very droll. Uh, Mr. Tuft, uh, in these uh, quips of yours, do I detect a slight tincture of jealousy? <laughs> no, it's not that. It's just uh, that, to me, you seem more like the frail type. Frail type is right. The frails love me. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. You know that uh, Betty Hutton you work with? She's coming all the way down here to see me next Friday. Really? Better get some rest. 
Don't be silly. A dame like that'll be meat for me. Well, that'll make it even. You'll be mutton for Hutton. <laughs> oh, boy, Betty Hutton. Boy, I can't wait for next week to get here. Come on, Sonny, let's talk faster. Hey, Arch. Hey, Arch, Miss Duffy just sent this note over to you. Let's see. Dear Archie. Well, sign Miss Duffy. <laughs> oh, uh, by the way, Finnegan, uh, do you know Sonny Tufts? He does? <laughs> Finnegan, this is Sonny Tufts, the movie actor. Oh, the, how do you do, Mr. Tufts? Say, hey, you look much taller standing up than you do on the screen. Well, you see, uh... <laughs> uh, They photographed me shorter so my head won't hit the soundtrack. <laughs> oh, that's, uh, how, did they, how did they make you shorter? They put me on a diet, shortening bread. <laughs> it's a coincidence. Uh, Finnegan eats cracked wheat. <laughs> You know, Mr. Tufts, uh, I like to try acting sometimes. Uh, when I was at college, they told me... Finnegan, you was at college. <laughs> well, certainly I was at college, Art. You remember last year? Huh? What did you study at college? I didn't study anything. They studied me. <laughs> but uh, anyways, uh, Mr. Tufts... Uh, 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 Mr. Tupch, I, I, I really think that you're very... Bad. But just call me Sonny. Eh? What was that? Just call me Sonny. Gee, that's very nice of you, Sonny. You can call me Daddy. <laughs> what a charming family. Lovely people. Uh... Oh, it's Daddy Oh, say, incidentally, Sonny, uh, speaking of beautiful dames, uh, get a load of that beaut over there. Where? Right over there, next to the cash register. Oh, yeah. She's the one without the keys. <laughs> yeah. A wonderful dame. Would you like to meet her? Not at all. Good. No <laughs> range it. In the meantime, uh, talk to uh, Mr. Bailey here. Mr. Bailey, Mr. Tufts. Mr. Tufts, Mr. Bailey. Sunny, cloudy. Shake hands. <laughs> Hello, Mr. Tufts. Hello. Enjoying yourself? Well, uh... You sure, like but uh, why kick? Oh, relax, Mr. Tufts. Maybe you're feeling irritable because of your cold. I haven't got a cold. And you may have a cold and not know it yet. I haven't got a cold. But you might have. Hey, what are we playing? Drop the handkerchief? <laughs> no, no, it's just that a cold can make a person very irritable. That's why I tell people to help themselves to fast relief from those annoying cold symptoms with Minute Rub, a modern chest rub. Minute Rub can help you feel better quickly. In fact, it takes no longer than a minute to begin to feel Minute Rub's relief. All you have to do is rub a little Minute Rub on your throat, chest, and back. Why, even before you finish, you feel a welcome sensation of warmth as Minute Rub begins to soothe the discomfort and tightness caused by your cold. Meanwhile, Minute Rub's menthol vapors aid in relieving that congested feeling in your nose and throat. So get yourself a jar of Minute Rub... And get yourself fast, welcome relief from annoying cold symptoms. And listen, Minute Rub won't harm clothing or linens. It's greaseless, stainless, disappears like vanishing cream. Be sure to ask for Minute Rub. M-I-N-I-T-R-U-B. Minute Rub. Modern chest rub. Archie, why do I have to put on an act? Why can't I just be myself? Well, I do it the hard way. <laughs> you see, uh, I just happened to remember that Sonny was once a society guy, you know, strictly a big Boston socialist. So... <laughs> <laughs> so, uh, Ergo, you've got to act like a society dame. Well, all right. But if it don't work... If it don't work. If it don't work. All the time. Talk, talk. Talk, talk is better than sing, sing. <laughs> Oh, here goes. Uh, hey, Sonny. Yeah? Uh, Sonny, old cad, I would, 
I would like to present you with Miss Duff Duffy. Uh, she just came out this year. Hmm, brave girl. <laughs> yeah. Uh, uh, Miss Duff Duffy, you don't happen to be related to the Duff Duffy owns this tab tavern, do you? Oh, yes. Papa is my painter. But you uh, see, this tavern is just one of his hobbies. Uh, <laughs> he keeps it for last. What a morbid sense of humor. Look, I know what you're thinking, Sonny, but this dame has ancestors from some of our best families, sir. Uh, but I'm telling you, you can see for yourself that she's real society. Of course. She has such a prominent background. <laughs> well, uh... <laughs> that she gets from her old lady. Uh, by the by, darling, uh, uh, how is your mate of these days? Uh, Dowager than ever, I suppose. <laughs> oh, you know, Nata, here, there, everywhere in the social world, she's all over New York. Yeah, and part of her hangs over into New Jersey. <laughs> oh, she's stop insulting Mama and get to the point. Oh, oh, yeah. Uh, say, incidentally, Sonny, uh, Miss Duff Duffy's sorority is giving a dance on St. Valentine's Day, and uh, you may not believe it, but she hasn't got a date for it yet. I believe it. <laughs> mm. Say, uh, why couldn't Sonny here take you to the dance? Well, yes, uh, mm. why not? Yeah. How about it, Sonny? When is it? St. Valentine's. By George, I can make it. <laughs> <laughs> why not? On account of a previous engagement, which I'm sure I can arrange. <laughs> Wait a minute, Sonny. You've got to take the thing. There's a thing I can't tell you about, but if you don't take her, it means that I go to jail. Well, why don't you take her yourself, then? She wants you. Arch, you take her. Just like you said, you know, we look so much alike, she'll never know the difference, kid. <laughs> I'm hoisted by my own facade. Well, 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 Archie, somebody's going to take me to the dance. I see what you mean. <laughs> okay, Miss Duffy, I guess you got me Ms. with Archie, me. Miss Archie? What? Reprieve from the governor. <laughs> you mean you didn't send the dough? No, on account of picture I saw hanging in the post office. Whose picture? The president of the million dollar publishing company marked down to a thousand dollars reward. <laughs> The guy was a crook? Yep, and here's your 25. Oh, boy, I'm a free man again. Now I can put the dough back into the register. Just a second, Archie. You don't have to put it back in the register if you take me to the dance. Now, ladies and gentlemen, it's time to leave Duffy's Tavern for this evening. But let's meet here again at the same time next week when our guest will be Betty Hutton. Sonny Tuft is currently being seen in the Fairmont production, Here Come the Waves. Don't forget to join us next week. In the meantime, for the smile of beauty... Remember, I pan a toothpaste. And if you have a cold... Remember, minute rub. And if you have a half hour next Friday evening at this same time, remember... Duffy's Tavern. Hello, Duffy. Yeah, that's right. Next week, Betty Hutton. Uh, and, you know, uh, Duffy, tonight, Sonny Tuff said that I'd be mutton for hutton, but uh, who cares? I'm a glutton for mutton. <laughs> See you next Friday, Duffy. Come on. Hey, Sergeant. Yeah? Mind if I, uh... Take a look at that package in your hand. No, it's just a bottle of Vitalis. Just Vitalis? Why, Sarge, most of us civilians haven't seen a bottle of Vitalis for months. How come? You fellas in the service are getting the entire supply of this famous hair grooming preparation. You see, because of wartime shortages, there isn't enough Vitalis to meet the wants of civilians plus soldiers and sailors. So naturally, servicemen are getting first call on the limited supply. <laughs> This is the National Broadcasting Company.